Who will lose the US election and how will the loser react? Well, at the time of making this video, Trump and Biden polls are just too close to call and it's anybody's game. But as much as I am interested in watching the results, I am far more fascinated watching the behaviours and emotions of both candidates because I'm intrigued to see how they will each react when they either win or lose. Whether it's a person, a team or a country, the truth is that whatever the race, there can only ever be one winner. And for every winner, no matter how close behind the opponent is, there has to be a loser. So today, I want to look at what is going to happen when the final results are out and either Trump or Biden have to accept that they have lost in the 2020 US presidential election. If you're new to my channel, I'm Sue Blackhurst and I bring the world of social psychology into everyday language. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button now if you're fascinated by watching people and understanding human behaviour. But if your life isn't going quite to plan and you feel like you are losing control and the world is against you, then do take a look at my 20 day overcoming obstacles and build mental strength training programme. It's in the link in the description box below because the tools in this program are going to really help you to focus on where you are now and show you how to get where you want to be. You'll also have the opportunity to download the Introvert Survival Guide, something that I don't quite think that Trump needs or be interested in, but that will lead you to my video on understanding and managing stress, which maybe he could use right now. The first book is free and the program costs less than a pizza night in. Now, if you've ever lost in a competition or tournament that maybe you've worked for years for and prepared and trained hard to get to, then you will know that the emotions of losing can have a huge impact on the body, which are almost impossible to hide. Your pride has been hit so hard that the mind begins working overtime to find ways to justify this loss and prove your worth as the ego wants to regain your self-image. But there's no shame in coming second place when you're running a marathon or in a World Cup. But when there are only two competitors in the race, the effects are going to be significantly magnified. So when watching any competition, when the winner is announced, the loser is going to feel like they've just stepped in the boxing ring with, I don't know, Tyson or Joshua, as the very real and measurable physiological and psychological effects begin to kick in. Now, Besides that first blow to the ego, losing really does actually hurt, but not in a metaphorical way, in a very real physical manner, because it makes your stomach churn, it changes the blood pressure as the heart begins to race, it constricts the muscles in the body, making you tense up, ready to flee or fight. It impairs decision making, increases stress, reduces testosterone, causing a dopamine deprival and leaves us with a very bitter taste in the mouth. Losing quite literally makes you feel sick and the physiological effects of losing aren't enough to deal with. There are some studies that suggest that the pain of losing is psychologically twice as powerful and harder to deal with than the joy of winning. When the losing side has been absolutely hammered, it's tough, but it is so much easier to accept because the mind accepts that the gap was just so great and as they say, the best man won. So what's particularly interesting with this election for me is the margin, as when there is such a fine line between winning and losing, it has an interesting and very different effect on how we feel and deal with coming at second place. There's a classic study out there that looked at athletes in the Olympics where they observed the reactions of contestants as they were awarded first, second and third place, your gold, silver and bronze. A series of photographs were taken showing facial expressions of each of the winners and these photographs were then shown to a series of non-biased subjects who had to rank them in order of their win. And the findings were really quite interesting. Because you would see the gold medal winners, they couldn't hide their joy and their overwhelming excitement. So they had these huge genuine smiles and their facial expressions were genuinely the easiest to rank as first place from their photographs. But the second and third places were placed in the opposite orders from these images. The bronze medal winners were also elated as they were, more than often, delighted to be placed, as a split second or a minor fault could have taken them off the podium altogether. And coming in third meant that they didn't have a false belief that they were ever going to win, as there was always somebody else just in front of them. 
But the interesting facial expressions was that of the person who came second. As the silver medal winner's face didn't show the elation of being second, it consistently showed disappointment. And this research concluded that coming second gave the contestant a feeling of, oh, I was so close, and if only I'd done this or that or the other, I could have been first. And what this means is that the closer we are to winning, the worse we feel. With the 2020 US election, it has never been so close. So as we watch either Trump or Biden take office, whoever loses is going to have to deal with their physiological and psychological reactions far greater than if it was a landslide. There are five stages to loss. There's denial and isolation, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally acceptance. But the timeline for each of them to set in depends upon the individual's coping methods and the significance of the loss. As the margin here is so close, looking at our you know, understanding of human behavior, whoever loses this election will initially rationalize his loss with a series of excuses focused on blaming the system, the process, the timing, and a whole host of other reasons that were totally out of their control or responsibility. It could be the angle of the camera, COVID restrictions, or even the weather. All these could easily be dragged into the pot as contributing factors that would have altered the results. It's a bit like, it should have been me, if only. So it's in this denial state that the individual struggles to comprehend and accept that the results could be true. So by blaming all these external factors, the losing party are simply deferring accountability in order to cushion the blow to their own egos. This behavior makes them believe that not only did they do their best, but they are the rightful winner and were let down by other factors. Alongside denial comes isolation, and when fused with anger, it leads to outbursts and accusations from the system being rigged to them being set up, and even they can then throw in elements of conspiracy against the winning individual. This anger can be so displaced that they feel the need to fight back in an attempt to prove that they should have won the title or they may throw in the towel completely, almost in a childish way, like saying, it's just not fair, I'm not playing. So whoever loses the election, we may see a campaign to take legal action and sue every possible contrib contributor, or we may see a resignation and a quitting altogether. The key part of accepting being placed anywhere other than first is having a clear understanding of expectations. Because meeting an expectation won't necessarily have a huge impact, it's what you expected. So why would you feel anything different? But unfulfilled expectations have a definite correlation to unhappiness and depression. Trump and Biden both have the expectation to be the President of the United States. Both candidates will have planned their own celebration parties and victory speeches. All conversations will be when I am president and when I'm in office and when we have won. So having these internal visions and plans taken away is bound to take a huge amount of time to come to terms with and then accept. Winning is probably the single most important thing in any competition, as winning means hierarchy and being at the top is all that counts. So whilst one is dealing with the rejection and all these losing emotions, the other who is being crowned winner will more than likely show a completely different set of winning behaviors. The effect on the body of winning can in part be associated with physiology and a chemical reaction because research has shown that winning increases testosterone, which in turn increases the chemical messenger dopamine. Dopamine plays a role in how we feel pleasure and leads to increased energy and improved ability to focus. And when that dopamine hits the brain's reward network, it sends this sort of a huge surge in creating that feel-good feeling. Dopamine makes you feel elated and on top of the world. And as a bit of a fun fact, it's the same hormone that's released when you eat something, you know, your favorite food and during sex. Anyway, depending upon how this feel-good emotion is interpreted by the winner and combined with their increased level of testosterone, the winner effect leads to a sense of increased self-worth and an increased sense of ability. It's like saying, I can do anything and I can take on the world and I am invincible. But what's interesting here is how that win is interpreted by others. 
because some will see the winner as a hero and feel that they are justified in their increased sense of self-worth and they will look up with us you know, in awe and adulation, whilst others who maybe didn't support the winner's methods see nothing more than what we'd called arrogance and in turn want to see nothing more than their downfall. Who will win? Well, at the time of making this video, it's way too close to call. But like many others, I'll be tuned in, but I'll be watching their reactions. No matter what mask we wear and what brave face we put on, feeling like we are constantly competing against the world and losing is tough. Take a look at the tools and the techniques in my 20 day overcome obstacles and finding mental strength program. It's in the link in the description box below. It costs less than a family night at the cinema and there's a 100% money back guarantee. So let's say, unlike Trump and Biden, you have nothing to lose. If you found this interesting, don't forget to give me a big like and do let me have your comments on how you think Trump and Biden will react. Thanks so much again for watching. Do take care and I will see you next time.